All right, now we're going to talk about the fair value OCI model for valuing investments. What is the fair value OCI model? Well, the fair value OCI model is where investments are recorded on our statement of financial position at fair value. At each reporting date, we're going to mark these investments to fair value. So the most important thing is that these investments are at fair value on our statement of financial position. Now, what happens to the changes in the value of the investments? If the investments go up from period to period or down from period to period, well, the unrealized gains and losses are going to be recognized in OCI or other comprehensive income. So that's an overview of the fair value OCI model. What does IFRS 9 say about the fair value OCI model? Well, IFRS 9 says that debt investments that are sometimes held and sometimes sold or securitized should be designated as fair value OCI. And equity investments can also be recorded as fair value OCI through one irrevocable election. So that's what public companies need to abide by. What about private companies in Canada that are reporting under ASPE? Well, ASPE doesn't recognize the concept of OCI, so Canadian private companies reporting under ASPE cannot use this model for valuing their investments. It's not recognized by ASPE. So fair value OCI is only used by companies that are reporting under IFRS. There's two unique things about the fair value OCI model that are important to remember. These are things that do not occur with any of the other investment valuation models. They're unique to the fair value OCI model. The first thing is that unrealized and realized gains and losses are treated differently. They're recorded differently in our records. So <clears throat> what is an unrealized versus a realized gain or loss? Well, an unrealized change in the investment is a change in the value of the investment that we continue to hold. And we're going to be recognizing unrealized gains and unrealized losses through OCI. So as long as we're continuing to hold the investment, if the valuation is fluctuating, we're recording that change in OCI. Now, when we actually sell the investment and we realize a gain or a loss, then the accounting changes. And we'll talk about that in the second unique characteristic of OCI. So while we're at this point in the tutorial, I just wanted to speak briefly to what the journal entries will look like in OCI. So if you have an investment that is increasing in value, so an increase in an investment from period to period, what will your journal entry look like for that? Assuming that you continue to hold it. Well, clearly we need to debit the investment because we know that if the investment is recorded at too low of a value on our statement of financial position, we need to mark it up to market. And that market value is higher in this example. Now, when we're doing this journal entry, we need to label it carefully. So we label it as investment, and it needs to be labeled with the valuation model that we're using. This is going to be a uh, mixed GL account, so any of our fair value OCI investments are going to be put into the same GL account. So we're going to have separate accounts for each of the different valuation models for our investments. And the credit in this situation is going to be unrealized gain or loss. OCI. So in this situation, the value of the investment is increasing and we're putting a gain into OCI. Now we use a joint account for OCI because this account is going to have gains and losses going through it. We don't have a separate account in OCI for a gain and a separate account for a loss. In this situation, it is a gain because it's a credit. Now what if the value of the investment decreases and we're continuing to hold it in this example? Then our journal entry is going to be, clearly, we need to credit the investment. We know that our investment is too high now in our statement of financial position, so we need to bring it down. 
So this part of the entry seems pretty simple. We know we need to bring the investment down. And in this case, we know that the debit again is gonna go to this unrealized gain or loss account in OCI. As long as we continue to hold it, we're putting both gains and losses through these accounts. So those are what those entries look like. Let's move on to talking about the second unique characteristic under the fair value OCI model. And the second unique characteristic is the fact that <coughs> when an investment is sold, when a fair value OCI investment is sold, the cumulative unrealized gains and losses, this is really important that it's the cumulative amount. So the cumulative unrealized gains and losses that went through OCI need to be reclassified out. So if you only held fair value OCI investments and you sold your entire investment portfolio, your OCI balance would have to be zero. OCI is, is a temporary account but it doesn't close from period to period like some of our other temporary accounts in accounting. It will have a balance in it as long as we continue to hold that investment that it's related to. As soon as that investment is sold, the entire amount that we ever put into OCI related to that particular security has to come out and be reclassified. So the next question is, well, if it has to come out, where does it go? And this brings us to this important concept of recycling. And this is also a unique concept to the fair value OCI model. So if the company follows recycling, that means that the unrealized gains and losses, unrealized gains and losses from OCI are going to be recognized on our income statement or statement of comprehensive income. So the concept of recycling, think of it this way, we already recognized the unrealized gains and losses in OCI, and now we're gonna recognize them again in the income statement, hence the concept of recycling. We're recognizing it again. If it's no recycling, that means that our unrealized gains and losses are gonna skip the income statement and they're gonna go straight to retained earnings. So normally your income statement would close to retained earnings at the end of each reporting period. But um, in this case, we're not gonna recognize the unrealized gains and losses in the income statement. We're gonna go straight into retained earnings. And the accounting standards specify which uh, securities have to follow recycling and no recycling. For instance, IFRS 9 requires debt securities not have recycling of unrealized gains and losses. Or I'm sorry. IFRS 9 requires recycling of unrealized gains and losses on debt securities, but not on equity securities. And the last thing I want to say before we move on to the next tutorial is in relation to transaction costs. So if we're incurring commissions or different costs in terms of buying or selling these securities, what happens to them? And transaction costs, in terms of buying the securities anyways, selling in uh, costs in terms of selling the securities would be net against our proceeds, but the transaction costs in terms of buying the securities, we capitalize transaction costs under the fair value OCI model when we purchase the securities. Check out our next tutorial as we walk through an example of how to record a fair value OCI investment.